it's a fun ride uh, on a streetcar. Uh, I rode streetcars to high school uh, all four years, and uh, the old streetcars uh, had a little section in the back called a called a smoker room. And I can remember I went into the smoker room there after somebody had smoked a cigar, and when I got to my destination at East Calgary High there, I was kind of woozy there from the cigar smoke. The, the boys used to grab a ride on the back of, this, of the streetcar on the outside, and they kind of ducked down so that the conductor couldn't see them. But, um, and I do know that in the winter, right on our hill, the uh, conductor would have to stop the streetcar and come out with sacks and put sacks underneath the wheels to get a little friction to get back up the hill again. But also in the streetcars, the back end was what they called the smoker. And anybody that smoked cigars, cigarettes, or pipes was allowed to go in there. And we thought that was really neat, but uh, we weren't allowed in there. Streetcars rumbled through the streets of Calgary for almost half of the 20th century. Few people had cars and there were few city buses. If it was too far to walk, most people either rode a bicycle or took a streetcar to where they needed to go. I remember many things about the streetcars, particularly on the run to Bowen S when they cranked the speed up a little bit. I was amazed at the amount of play in the windows. The streetcars would sway sideways and back and forth and the glass would, would <laughs> go many directions without cracking or splitting. They, they, they had a remarkable tolerance for sway. I also remember, I think the fine was $50 fine for spitting, which was ignored in the back smoker section of the, of the streetcar. The first streetcar rattled through the streets of Calgary on July 5th, 1909, the same year that Calgary's first skyscraper, the Grain Exchange, was built, all six stories of it. Both were signs that Calgary had become a real modern city. We used to catch the see the streetcar going by, and we would put our hand on the thing and get towed on a bike. And if you didn't have your bike, it would have even better. We, <laughs> we'd hang onto the bars across the back window and sort of a ledge out there and sort of crouch like that and hang up. And when you got to your stop, if he wasn't stopping, we would pull the cord and held the thing on the electrical wire and then it would stop and we'd run like the, <laughs> the very Dickens and the old guy would have to come out and pull it down and maneuver it on again, you know, and the air would be blue for about four blocks around. <laughs> In the old days when things were really tough, I remember somebody discovered that you could take one of those little streetcar tickets and take a razor blade and part it. And you could really make two streetcar tickets out of one by when you boarded the streetcar. I never did this, but others did. Put the, the printed side of the ticket toward the conductor and drop it in the box. And if the other side of the ticket, of course, was where it had been split and there was no printing and the other half of the ticket was good for another day. Electric streetcars served Calgary faithfully for 41 years, the last one retiring on December 29th. 1950. There is one surviving original streetcar from the Calgary Municipal Railway, the one that made that last run. Car number 14 now makes the run from the lower parking lot to the upper parking lot at Heritage Park regularly. Here are the hand straps that steadied Calgary commuters all those years ago. And while it hasn't been enforced in a number of years, there's still a posted $50 fine for spitting. A replica streetcar, number 15, also serves the Heritage Park route. Whatever car you ride, it's still a marvelous trip back in time. 